Greetings everyone. I am Dr. Hitesh Tyagi, President of Department of Radiology, JJM Medical College. Today I will be talking about the neuroimaging of Leak Syndrome, a case series and review of literature. Leak Syndrome is a rare degenerative disease with incidence of 1 is to 40,000. Leak is defined as neurodegenerative disease with variable symptoms is caused by mitochondrial dysfunction from genetic defects accompanied by CNS symptoms. Clinical symptoms include psychomotor delay or regression, hypotonia, strabismus, nystagmus, and feeding difficulty. There can also be cerebral ataxia and lactate acidemia. Even if there is heterogeneity in clinical, genetic, or biochemistry findings, imaging findings are usually identical which are bilateral symmetrical necrotic lesions associated with demyelination, gliosis in basal ganglia, brainstem and cerebellum. Here we review the imaging findings of patients sus suspected with Leak syndrome which were later confirmed for the same by raised serum and CSF lactate levels. MRS was done with single voxel in basal ganglia or on the lesion. Case 1 is of a 2 year old male patient which shows caudate and putamen T2 flare hyperintensities with diffusion restriction. Also, there was symmetrical T2 flare hyperintensities in bilateral medullary white matter tracts. There was double lactate peak in caudate nucleus on MRS. Case 2 is of a 6 month old patient uh, in which MRI shows bilateral symmetrical T2 flare hyperintensities in bilateral caudate lentiform nucleus which also shows diffusion restriction. MRS shows reduced NA and double lactate peak. In our third case of a four year old male patient shows T2 flare hyperintensity in bilateral putamen, caudate, tegmentum and periaqueductal region which shows diffusion restriction and double lactate peak on MRS. Another case of a three month old male patient shows bilateral symmetrical T2 flare hyperintensities in basal ganglia which is showing diffusion restriction and MRS shows decreased NA and double lactate peak. A case of six month old shows a diffusion restriction in basal ganglia with similar findings on MRS. This is a case of two year old patient which shows T2 flare hyperintensities in bilateral periaqueductal gray matter, dorsal pons, and the tracts of brainstem. MRS shows double lactate peak on the lesions. This is a case of five month old male patient which shows bilateral symmetrical T2 flare hyperintensities in caudate and dorsomedial aspect of thalamus, periaqueductal dentate nucleus, which are showing diffusion restriction. There are other MRI findings of HIE also present in our case. On MRS, it showed double lactate peak. Most common location involved in our study is caudate and putamen, followed by midbrain. In all the cases of clinically proven leak syndrome, thalamus was spared in all our cases except the case with HIE. Coming to the discussion, Leak syndrome is a clinical phenotype of mitochondrial disorder with the following diagnostic criteria. It is a neurological disease with progressive nature, clinical manifestations of disease of brainstem and basal ganglia, radiologically symmetrical lesions in basal ganglia and brainstem, elevated blood or CSF lactate levels. The most common areas involved are basal ganglia, thalami and brainstem. In our study, there was significant sparing of thalami, which is not correlating with the other studies done. Involvement of lower brainstem suggests the progression of disease into advanced stage and may lead into occurrence of respiratory failure and sudden death. Involvement of cerebral white matter is also indicator of progression of disease into late stage. Other lesser common neuroimaging findings may include unifocal or multifocal infarctions, diffuse supratentorial leukodystrophy, diffuse of focal cortical atrophy or may also show prominent cerebellar atrophy. So coming to the conclusion, Leak syndrome is a rare metabolic disease of newborn 
specific imaging pattern of involvement and specific clinical history can help in prompt diagnosis. Involvement of bilateral basal ganglia is most common finding followed by midbrain and sparing of all thalami in our cases of leak syndrome in our institute. In many Indian institutes, due to lack of molecular and higher investigation, clinical feature and neuroimaging remains mainstay method of diagnosis of leak syndrome. These are my references. Thank you.